I've often heard that acrylic paints are difficult to work with, and I even believed so myself for quite a long time. But now they are my favorite medium, and I wanted to share the materials I use and why, the reasons acrylics suit me, and might even suit you, and we'll chat about that while I paint this eye. Welcome to another art video. I'm Evelyn and I like to paint mostly with acrylics, though I do share oil pastel and sketch videos here on YouTube as well. This eye motif is based on a painting of Ariadne from the myth of the maze and the minotaur that I painted last year. But because the painting was quite small for an upper body figure painting, I wanted to paint a close-up of just her eye for practice and honestly because eye paintings are always fun and relaxing to do. A little note on my art background. While I'm in no way an expert painter and actually spend most of my time drawing just line art, I did use watercolors whenever I colored anything for a good 10 years then switched to gouache for a few months as I got serious about painting and then transitioned into acrylics about two years ago. I've also used oil paints on occasion. I'll be speaking from that point of view of having tried a variety of painting mediums with acrylics now being my favorite. While palette knives or spatulas are of course an option, I use brushes 99% of the time for painting in acrylics. For this small painting here, my trusted Da Vinci Forte in size 0 did a lot of the heavy lifting. This is a multimedia brush that's very resilient, but the bristles still absorb and hold water quite well. For comparison, this Princeton acrylic brush that I also really like has even stiffer bristles and doesn't hold water at all. For the soft creamy paint application I wanted, this brush by Rosemary & Co was the one I paired with my Da Vinci one. It's a long flat with incredibly soft hair and the flat tip lets me paint larger surfaces and lines or edges. But as long as you don't use a soft watercolor brush, pretty much any brush will work for acrylics. You just need a little bit of tension to the bristles and honestly, for most of my painting time, I just used random arts and crafts brushes. For the actual paints, nowadays I mostly use golden acrylic paints. Here you can see two versions, the heavy body paints, which are very dense and creamy, and the open acrylics which are more fluid and have a slower drying time. While I love that drying time delay, I found that using just the open acrylics on their own can make the paint feel a bit sticky or tacky. So I usually mix these in a 2 to 1 ratio with the heavy body ones. I also use a couple of these tiny Liquitex Basics, which are a nice size to try out fun colors you don't quite want to buy a full tube of. And also these acrylic paints by Korean brand Shinhan. Since I can get them everywhere here, they are very cheap and while they are less pigmented, I like to mix them with my golden paints to extend the color without changing the hue or value too much. Then I have a couple mediums, which are a really fun part about painting in acrylics, by the way. The one I use in this painting is just this golden retarder fluid, which will extend drying times even further and also, when mixed with the paints at the right ratio, makes them a little easier to mix and blend. While my usual varnish is either matte or satin, I bought this high gloss varnish by Liquitex. I want to evoke the feel of a glazed ceramic tile or mosaic tile once the eye painting on that small panel is varnished. So here's the high gloss versus my usual satin varnish. You can see that I was painting on a panel for the Ariadne portrait, and the miniature eye painting today will be on panel as well for consistency. That brings us to my first reason I really like acrylics. I can paint on pretty much any surface I want to. No matter if smooth gesso panels, rough canvas, paper with or without gesso, also wood, stones, sketchbook covers, 
they react differently to these different surfaces in some way, and paper, for example, can make them feel like watercolors at the early stages. But overall, really anything goes, and I found that quite freeing. In the background, you can see me mix colors. Now, this is for a small painting, so I use very little paint at a time. Acrylics dry up, and I didn't want to be wasteful. For larger paintings, I premix some important shades and fill them into small tops with airtight lids so that I can go back to them over several days or even weeks. I added just a little drop of retarder fluid to extend the paint, and only as much water as the brush naturally held after wetting it real quickly. Compared to paper, gesso panels don't absorb much water, and the paint might just run down the surface, so this is something I had to get a feeling for over time while painting. I call what I'm doing here additive mixing. No idea if there's a professional word for that, actually. What I mean by additive is that I mix a shade, use it, and then use the leftover of that to add new paint to shift the hue warmer or cooler, lighter or darker, but still overall the same palette. Especially small paintings like this that I finish in a single sitting without much thinking or repainting seem to work best like this as the colors flow together naturally. I'm not using many of my open acrylics here, especially since mixing those with the retarder fluid isn't ideal. And honestly, they're not necessary for small formats like this, more for large formats where you want to do a lot of blending. And that's another reason I love acrylics. They don't blend well. That sounds bad, I know, but hear me out. That's a style preference, but personally, I love visible brushwork, and with oils, my weakness was always that I'd actually blend them too much. If you like a soft, ethereal, smooth finish, then oils are probably the way to get that much more naturally. But acrylics force me to just layer brush stroke over brush stroke. I want the violet of the gesso base to still show through, so I'm fading out the colors towards the edges, leaving some blank space. I also took up the same purple in the eye again. Because acrylics dry so quickly and don't blend together after that, I usually paint in multiple layers. The first layer here was to figure out the proportions and darkest shadows. Then, in the layer after that, I'm looking at warm and cool areas, bringing in, for example, burnt sienna or more ultramarine blue to figure those out and slowly build up the colors. The layer after that is when I focus on textures and details. This layered approach helps me with taking a painting step by step, instead of being overwhelmed. The opaque paint layers are why I switched from watercolors to gouache and then to acrylics. There's something so freeing about being able to paint a nearly completely opaque white on top of darker colors, building and honestly just messing around with a painting until it feels right. The ultramarine violet that was part of the base layer, mixed in with the white gesso, actually is mixed into all of these shades of the painting. Ultramarine violet is quite a transparent color compared to ultramarine blue, and works amazing when neutralizing warmer color mixes that contain yellow shades like yellow ochre. 
or even a brown like burnt sienna. It's still a new color in my collection and already I'm reaching for it in a lot of my paintings. Sometimes you just fall in love with a new color and it really suits your mixing and painting style or your sense of aesthetics. The next reason, and actually the most important one from just a practical point of view, is storage. I usually work on multiple paintings at once and really don't have a lot of space, so the acrylics drying quickly and me being able to just lean the paintings against the wall behind my desk and then against each other in between painting sessions helps a lot. If something is urgent for a client, I can even toss the painting into the scanner on the very same day. Cat hair and dust is also less of an issue with sticking to the paint before it dries. And I just love how it feels like I can't mess up, but always just continue to layer and repaint if needed. There's also not a long wait time in between finishing and varnishing. Again, it depends a bit on which mediums you used, but I usually can varnish after about 3 to 4 days. Or if I've used a lot of retardo fluid and open paints, I'll give it a few weeks, just to be safe. For this eye in the final layer, I'm pushing the brush strokes beyond what I usually do trying to get a feathery, fussy look. It's inspired by the fibers of the string in Ariadne's myth, but then it took on a life of its own. The final layer where I used those fuzzy brush strokes is also when I used some more of my open paints like the yellow ochre and generally less and less water. It's easier to layer the slow drying open acrylics on top of the faster drying ones. Layering too much paint on top of open paints could lead to them not drying properly underneath. It's not really an issue for me since I paint in very thin layers, but for thicker paint application it's good to keep in mind. Golden Paints have a lot of resources and blog posts on their website about their different paints and mediums, how to combine them and what to avoid. For this eye painting, not much repainting or layering was needed, but instead I had another step ahead of me – embellishing. The original Ariadne painting had a lot of patterns and surreal elements, and I wanted to show the string in this small eye painting too, but with golden embellishments instead. To protect the paint layer, I first used an isolation coat. Though in hindsight, I don't think that step was really necessary. I used colored pencils to very faintly sketch in where I wanted the string to go and dabbed these iridescent paints by Golden on before spreading them out, as they are quite gritty and dense. The three dots under her eye represent tears for the tragedies she goes through, depending on which version of the myth you look at. Now, I'd mentioned earlier that I'm using a high-gloss varnish for these eye paintings. The small size and their colorful base reminded me of mosaic tiles, 
and I wanted to capture that feeling of a shiny piece of ceramic. The varnish brush here is actually just a cheap wash or crafts brush. My proper varnish brushes were still drying after varnishing some larger paintings earlier that day. Now, disclaimer, you're actually not supposed to just spill your varnish directly onto paintings, but to put it in a small bowl and then brush it on for an even finish. But these are really small and it's easier to brush everything within seconds, so I have to admit, I got a bit lazy. To get the glossy finish I needed multiple layers, and I really love the look of this glossy varnish by Liquitex overall. Even if it's not something I'd use for my usual paintings, where I prefer satin or even matte. Using the varnish as a part of the art process and changing it depending on the painting and its meaning is another reason I just really enjoy acrylics and the range of different finishes of varnish, paints and all the mediums I haven't even gotten into yet in this video, like soft gel medium in glossy or matte, modeling paste, let me know if you'd like to see me mix some of my paints and mediums to show the different effects you can achieve with those. After all of that, I also made a limited number of prints. I'd scanned the eyes before adding the embellishments so that I could then hand embellish the individual prints instead. That way they're each unique, and I just like the hand-embellished golden paints better than printed effects. Have you tried painting with acrylics, and do you like them? Did you, like me, hate them when you first used them, maybe during an art class in school? I really fell in love with this medium over the last two years or so, and I hope you could sense that during this little painting video as I was gushing about my materials. My channel here is mostly about practice sketches as I try to improve and become a better artist. And also fun experiments like drawing with oil pastels. But acrylics really are 90% of what I do, but a bit hard to film since I want to focus on just painting. I hope I can figure out how to do that better. And I would love to see you in future art videos, no matter which medium they are in. Thank you so much for watching and I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments.